we just spent $40,000 on a greenhouse. What does that get you? Well, come take a tour and I'll show you. I've got a lot of my personal plant collection in here and some of the things like my seed grown lemon tree, I've invested nine years in growing. So it's very important that this greenhouse functions properly. Temperature fluctuations are kind of a big deal when it comes to plants. I don't want it to hit, you know, 35 degrees in here and then go up to 90 degrees. That's really terrible for, for plants and it can cause them a lot of harm. So we kind of had to retrofit this thing perfectly in order to ensure that those fluctuations aren't taking place. If you guys follow me over here, I wanna show you the vents. Ventilation is of the utmost importance. So we have two of these 24 inch fans up here and these things are gonna be constantly running. I know they're not running right now and that's because they're pretty loud. You wouldn't be able to hear what I'm saying, but these things are constantly gonna be sucking the heat out of the greenhouse. They're attached to thermo speed controllers. I can control the speed of the fan and I can control what temperature those thermo speed controllers turn on at so that way we're not pulling heat out of the greenhouse in the middle of the night when we're you know paying for propane to heat this thing so it's kind of a big deal that that works correctly now on the other end of the greenhouse over here we actually have the air intake air intake is very important because if you have exhaust fans uh, constantly pulling air out we have to have some cool air to replace that air that's being sucked out so this air intake is actually attached to a special motor that's attached to this thermostat control right here. And so at the same temperature that those exhaust fans turn on, this air intake vent is also gonna turn on and allow that air to start being replaced as the exhaust fans pull it out. And that's very important. And the placement of this is also very important. We want the placement to be on the opposite end of the greenhouse. That way airflow is traveling across and it's creating a, a, a cool flow of air across all the plants. We're eliminating hot spots in the greenhouse, which is very important. Over here in the corners, in all four corners of this greenhouse, I have these 18 inch fans and these fans are usually constantly going. And once again, I've turned them off because it would be too loud. You guys wouldn't be able to hear me, but it's very important that we have these fans in the corners all pointing in different directions because what that's going to do is also create airflow. It's, you know, if you have a overhead watering system, it's going to be very important to have that airflow to get the moisture off of the leaves so we're not getting fungal growth. But then also this is going to help eliminate cold spots and hot spots during the night and during the day um, to keep our plants healthier and happier. So. Uh, the ventilation is so important and these are things that I think kind of get overlooked in a lot of greenhouses um, But it's definitely worth spending the money. It's really not that expensive for these things uh, And it's worth spending the money to have the healthy plants um, Because the whole point of having a greenhouse is to be able to grow what you want to grow And it's very difficult to do that if the growing conditions are not optimal So these are a few of the things that are really going to take the growing to the next level now as far as the watering system is concerned it's actually a very simple system. We've just got this hydrant run out to the greenhouse. It's very important that you're below the frost line with that uh, water piping. That way you're not getting bursting pipes during the winter. But we have this hydrant going underground and up into the greenhouse where it's nice and warm. We never have to con uh, concern ourselves with it possibly freezing. And then all we have is just one of these little hose timers here. This brand is Orbit here. Uh, it's worked pretty well for me though. They do seem to go out relatively awesome, awesome often and I don't know that that's really something that you could control. I feel like all the brands are kind of the same. I've used a few brands. They seem to go out um, reasonably often. So that's kind of an expense that's going to continue to be ongoing and I actually recently had an event in this greenhouse where one of these went out the valve wouldn't shut and the water was just continuously running in here and thank goodness we came that day because the plants were getting watered so much that it was actually pooling in the containers which is a terrible situation you don't want that so it's important to really try to find a good brand uh, uh, to control the watering system with and we do have overhead watering in here but just having this this hydrant here and this little timer to hook up is super important. It's easy to hook up for a novice uh, and it works really well. Our overhead watering system is very simple. We've just got this half inch irrigation tubing, which you can find pretty much anywhere. I got this at Walmart. 
uh, believe it or not. Every year seasonally they get um, their irrigation stuff in. So I got this half inch irrigation line, uh, relatively cheap. Um, and then we have our quarter inch irrigation line that's coming down from here and I have these connected to valves. So if I'm not using an area of the watering system, I can just switch those valves off and it'll shut water off to this particular area. The nozzles that I'm using are a 360 degree um, deflector nozzle. Now, I actually had to order these from Canada. I've watched videos where people have seemingly been able to find them uh, locally where they live. I'm not lucky enough for that. And I actually searched in Google uh, for hours and was unable to find anybody in the United States that was offering these uh, nozzles. So if you're a place offering these nozzles, build a website so I can buy them from you because I love these things. So I would definitely do that. This is just some cut PVC pipe to add some weight and hold the line down. Um, but very simple system and works very well. Now, as far as our heating system is concerned, guys, it's very important that you do the math on a heating system. You need to know what size heater you're gonna need in order to heat your greenhouse. In a greenhouse this size, uh, electrical systems are not gonna be very efficient. Uh, the electric will, bill would be outrageous. The bill's gonna be outrageous no matter what you do to heat a greenhouse of this caliper. However, uh, electricity would be completely out of the question. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't create enough heat. So what we did is we went with a propane heater. Now this propane heater right here was actually gifted to us uh, from my uncle. So shout out to Uncle Emil right there. Uh, thanks for giving us this thing. Uh, it was a little bit dirty. We had to clean it up. And the propane guys are supposed to be here next week in order to hook this up, which funny story about that. This was supposed to be hooked up to propane a while back. The company that we ended up going with, who shall not be named, uh, they did not hold up their end of the bargain and get out here when they were supposed to. So we ended up using a 30,000 BTU heater in this last cold snap. It got down to 24 degrees, which isn't the worst. Uh, so we were able to make it through. But with that being said, it would have been nice to have a 100,000 BTU heater going. Um, but it wasn't, it's all ready to go. I had to change out a few of the parts cause this thing is kind of old as the Hills. However, apparently these heaters last forever. I've never used one before. The greenhouse that we, uh, were using before this, we still use it, uh, was much, much, much smaller. Um, and the 30,000 BTU heater worked out great. So this is all a new experience. Um, and I'm learning a lot of, along the way, but very important to do the math. Uh, on the heating system you're going to use and what you know whether you're going to go with natural gas propane um, if it's small enough uh, you probably could get away with electric but we're using propane here so in this little area of the greenhouse here is kind of a lot of citrus i do have a pomegranate here um, this Eg egyptian guava which i got from logis shout out to logis i love that place we went out to the east coast and I had to stop in there and I bought a bunch of plants because I'm a huge fan. Um, up here, we have our nine-year-old seed-grown lemon tree, which has been waiting for its home for, for nine years. It's been a rough life. It's about to get a lot better though. Um, so yeah, kind of the citrus area. We got some coffee growing in there. Um, and then right down here, we have some seedling guavas. Uh, I can't remember where I got the seeds for these things, but really cool story these guavas when they were seedlings i mean i'm talking like they had just sprouted um we ended up getting like a freak out of the blue 19 degree uh weather event and that's 19 degrees fahrenheit for the international people and these things survived no problem it was unbelievable i was com i was completely shocked by the whole thing and so these are kind of special. That's why I have three of them. I was gonna sell a couple of them, but I ended up keeping all three because when you're a crazy plant person, that's what you do. It's like, you know, the crazy cat lady has a bunch of cats and she's never getting rid of any of them. She's gonna keep keeping them. That's what we do with plants. We just hoard them. Now down these shelves, we have these, these long 30 foot shelves running down each side of the greenhouse. These are gonna be our plants that are for sale. Now this, this place is still kind of chaotic. We just moved in here not that long ago. So we're still figuring things out, but this is gonna be our for sale plants that we sell at theamericanfigcompany.com. As many of you guys know, if you are looking for plants, uh, head to the website. Right now is cutting season, so if you want some awesome fig varieties, it's a good time to go check that out. But 
Uh, we're gonna have our for sale plants all along the sides here on both sides of the greenhouse. Um, so should add up to quite a bit of space and that's really what we're hoping for, uh, you know, when you find the space in between all the collector plants. Now in this little area right here, this is kind of the banana section. We've got a whole bunch of different varieties of bananas, ladyfinger, ice cream banana, super dwarf Cavendish. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, I really love bananas, got into them a while back. So uh, I love having them in here. It just gives a total tropical vibe and you know, getting some free bananas, nothing wrong with that. Right here is my, I believe it's, it's either three or four year old seedling loquat tree. Uh, from what I understand, there's no such thing as a bad loquat. And I'm sure this is gonna be no exception. It's probably gonna flower and fruit this coming season. So I'll make a video about that, so stay tuned. But I really love this plant. The foliage on it is beautiful and it kind of has these serrated edge, you know, leaves, which is, is kind of cool, but it's a really pretty plant. Now, believe it or not, our cameraman, Daniel, who you guys have never seen, I don't think you've ever seen him. It's a big secret, but he actually planted this as a seedling. This is an apple guava seedling. And look how tall it is now. This is about the same age, I believe, as the loquat. Um, we're really into seedling plants. Like I know, you know, some people that's like a total, like they don't want to deal with it. You want to buy the grafted plants. That's all well and good, but it is super fun to us to grow seedlings. Um, so we have a lot of seedling plants. It's just fun, guys. Uh, if you haven't done it before, I highly suggest doing it. It's a wild time. <laughs> now over here along this shelf, these are all new fig varieties that are gonna be added to the farm. We have like 165 varieties. We don't offer all of them to the public just yet. We like to do a little bit of research on them. How cold hardy are they? Uh, are they gonna consistently produce fruit year after year? So we don't offer everything right away to people. Um, so these are all new varieties. These things still have to be tested. They'll be planted in the spring. Um, so, yeah, eventually this is gonna be more retail space here. Um, but for right now, it's, it's a lot of figs. Now something, this is how you know I have problems, guys. This tree right here, I, I'm, no, I'm not even sure what this is. Like, as far as ornamentals are concerned and like native plants, like I'm really not that in tune with all of that. There's some people I know, and I have friends that are like diehards into the natives. They know everything about it. But I'm really into just like the, the fruiting, the edible plants. Um, but this right here was a seedling tree that popped up in our food forest. If you guys haven't seen our food forest, check those videos out. They're really interesting. Uh, I, at least I think so anyway. But anyway, this popped up in the food forest and me being the, the crazy plant guy, I was like, I can't just let it go. You know what I mean? So I dug it up and I put it in a pot. It was probably about that big when I dug it up. And now look at it. And we'll probably plant this at the farm somewhere if I can uh, convince everyone else to let me do that. But so yeah, just kind of an interesting thing. And if you follow me down here, we kind of have reached our citrus area again. You know, we've got, we've got lemons and everything forming here. Uh, we have our, our kumquats coming in, which I love kumquats guys. If you haven't had a kumquat, Highly suggest getting one. They're really good. Uh, and then we have more figs over here that are going to be planted at the farm, uh, gonna be tested. As you can see, they have fruit all over them. So I'm kind of waiting for these things to ripen up. I love eating figs. And to be honest with you guys, a lot of times when I should be doing like, you know, my research on the figs, like what is the flavor profile like, those types of things. I'll be like doing something and I'll just see a fig in passing and I'll grab it and I'll eat it. And then I'm like, what, what, which fig was that? That was really good. I can't remember. Oh my gosh. So, uh, I'll pay more attention to that stuff. Anyway, guys, that's just a little bit of a greenhouse tour. I'll give a more in-depth tour later, but hopefully you found this video interesting. If you guys like the content, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, share with any of your friends who are building a greenhouse. Uh, and might be interested in this tour. Uh, there's some helpful content in here. Check out theamericanfigcompany.com if you guys wanna support us. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.